Welcome back, guys. Um, somebody in the comment section asked me to talk about super elevation, and today we are here to talk about super elevation. So let's go. Have you ever driven before? And as you were driving, you realize when you're negotiating a bend, you realize that the vehicle is running out of control. So that running out of control is actually um, acceleration due to the negotiating of the bend. So how to um, counteract that acceleration is actually uh, what we call super elevation. And today, that is what we're going to be talking about. So super elevation on a road happens when the road tilts. Um, as you can see, down here, we have um, a normal crown road. So let me click on this and go back. So down here, we have a normal crown road. Um, let me zoom in a little bit and take this up. So down here, we have a normal crown road. And then as you move up, you can see the arrow, um, the road starts changing its cross-section. So the left uh, lane of the road goes onto a zero-degree cross-slope. And then um, it was a negative cross-slope at first down there. Then it changes to a 2.5 cross-slope. And as you move up, you get to a point where you call a full super. So this is a full super for urban roads, and this is a full super for rural roads. Uh, urban roads are confined to four uh, degrees of super elevation, while rural roads can go all the way to 6%. So this is what we call super elevation, actually. When the road banks so that it accommodates the acceleration uh, force that is being created through the bending of the road. So let's see how we do it on civil 3D. So before we go to civil 3D again, so you can see here another diagram that shows how the super elevation occurs. So you can see the road starts uh, at a normal crown, the normal crown is you have the center of the road as the high point, and then you have the cross slopes on the right and on the left. And then uh, you can see uh, a level crown here, whereby the left of the road has started super elevating because the curve is maneuvering towards the right, as you can see. And then by the point you're getting to this um, cross section of the road, you can see the road is fully super elevated, such that the cross slope on this side matches the cross slope on the right of the road. So super elevation happens for some distance uh, within the curve. And then again, as you move out of the curve to the tangent, you can see that uh, you get a level crown and then you go back to the normal. And you can see here we have a distance. There's a distance called the tangent uh, runout, TRO, the tangent runout. This is the distance required to move from a normal cr crown to a level crown as you're super elevating. And then you have the runoff, whereby the super elevation is being uh, developed. And you can see this is the distance required to move from the level crown to the full super elevation. Going back to civil 3D, you can see uh, our alignment. We have an alignment here that is moving from this side. You can see station zero going all the way up to this other side. Uh, it is a 2.6 alignment. And for this alignment, we're going to be calculating super elevation for this. So let's see, how do you do that? Just select the alignment. Let me select the alignment and then at the contextual tab of the alignment, you can see there's something called super elevation here. So I can click on super elevation, the button of super elevation, and then I can create or I can calculate super elevation. So let me calculate super elevation. So it's asking the alignment does not contain super elevation data. What would you like to do? Of course, I want to calculate the super elevation now. So design speeds are not found on the current alignment. It's saying design speeds are not uh, found on the current alignment. So super elevation is dependent on the um, design speed. So those runout uh, lengths and those runoff lengths are purely dependent on the uh, design speed. And also the manuals, um, uh, whether it's the Ashton or Green Books and all that, they contain um, the distances for each uh, unique design speed. Let's say if you have uh, 50 um, kilometers per hour design speed, there is particular uh, acceptable runout uh, or transi transition lengths for, for each uh, speed. Okay, so let's just go with this and continue and calculate our our design, our, our super elevation, I mean. So now that Civil 3D told us that we do not have design speeds and our design criteria allocated to our alignment. Let's go ahead and allocate uh, our, our design speed and design criteria. So select on the alignment, a right click and go to alignment properties. And all the way to the right, there's a design criteria tab. 
you can add a design speed. So how do you do that? You just click on the addition here. And our design speed for this road is uh, just a 50 kilometer uh, per hour road. And then you can select your uh, criteria based design. So I select there. And if you want to select a criteria file, so you can just click on these uh, chevrons here. And as you can see, there are different uh, design uh, sets for different country kits. For example, here you have the Australia and New Zealand country kit. Uh, but for us, we want to choose the the Ashto um, design criteria. So just go ahead and select the metric 2011 roadway design standards. Um, just select this and click on open. As you can see, um, the transition length uh, table is two lane and the attainment method is the Ashto 2011 crown. So once your criteria is selected, so the reason why I selected this is because um, this Ashto matches uh, my local uh, standards and that's why I selected this Ashto. So once that is selected, now you can um, apply and we can proceed with our spur elevation uh, calculations. So go back to the um, contextual tab of this alignment and go to the alignment, uh, spur elevation, and then calculate spur elevation once again and click on calculate spur elevation now and a road type. Uh, there are two different kinds of roads. Um, you can have either a crown road or a planar road. So a crown road is where by you have the crown of the road raised at the center and then the planar, it only has one slope. So these two lanes can see are uh, of the same slope. So our road type for now will go with the undivided crown. So this is what we are using for now. We are not doing the, uh, the roads with the medians. We're just doing a road with an undivided crown and the pivot method is at the center line. So once that is done, you just go to next and then for the number of lanes on each, each side is 3.5, just go with 3.5. And then for the normal slope, just go with uh, 2.5. And then go to next. And then the shoulder control. So for the shoulders, as you saw uh, from the presentation, is that the shoulders, we do not want them to have any super elevation. So let's uncheck for the, for the shoulders. So we don't want uh, them to super elevate. So let's just um, uncheck that and go to next. And then here again gives you a chance to select this design criteria. You can have the chevrons again and then you go back to the list of design criteria standards. And then for the super elevation rate table, here you can change your super elevation rate. You can see there's an 8%, there's a 10%. For my country's uh, standards is that for the rural road, which this is a rural road, it is a 6% um, limit. So you select the 6% limit and then for the transition length table is two lane and then the attainment method is the Ashto 20,000 crown, uh, 20,011 crown roadway. And then the transition formula for super elevation runoff is that the percentage of tangent for, t uh, for tangent curve is 66.67% and then on spiral for spiral curve is 100%. That's okay. And then curve smoothing, you can, uh, uh, you can apply curve smoothing if you want and then you can at automatically resolve uh, overlap. So I want to uh, the software to do for me the automatic re uh, resolving of overlaps. So once you're done, you just click on finish. And then something happens. As you can see on my left here, you have the panorama view. So I click on the panorama, click again. Oh, okay. Let me click on the panorama, sorry. Yeah, now you're presented with a table of super elevation, which has the super elevation data. As you can see here, it's giving us, uh, we have a curve and give us a giving us the transition length for the run out, this is it. And then for the runoff, this is it. And this is the total length. And then you have the beginning of full super. Um, so because of the low design speeds, we do not have a very big uh, super elevation. You can see, as for elevations are, there's only at this point where we have a sharp curve and then you have the six degree um, elevation. Okay. So this is your data and if you want to export the data of your super elevation, you can um, export your data from up here. So you can just click there if you want to export your super elevation data and it can come in as a CSV, a comma uh, separated value 
which is uh, you, which you can open in Excel. So you can save your spell elevation data and you can go and check it and it can be used for setting out on site uh, to know where um, the road is starting to super elevate and, uh, and as the construction is going on, uh, this data can be used um, uh, for spell elevation. So let's click on this and let's see what happens. Let's just click on this. So let's go to our alignment and add the spoil elevation labels. So I'll click on my alignment, left click on your alignment, and then right click and go to edit alignment labels. And here you can see for the type of labels, I want to add the spoil elevation critical points. Um, you can also add the symbols. So let's add the critical points. So it's showing us the beginning of the alignment, the beginning of normal crown. Just say OK to all of them. And then you apply. And let me see the symbols. Um, let me just apply for this and, and go and see what is going on. So I want to show also the labels. Yes, uh, I want to show the label. So what I do is that I change this uh, label set again to the basic one. So let me go again to edit lab alignment labels. So let me change this to uh, let me change this to to the basic one which has labels. So I will add this one. Uh, I will say okay to each and every uh, station there, and then I apply. So as you can see, you have your spray elevation data being shown on your alignment. So here you can see this is the beginning of normal crown. And then you have the level crown where one side of the road uh, becomes flat and then the other side is banked. So let's let's see. Let's see on our table what this means. So there's a table here. So as you can see, as super elevation happens, you, we we saw there's a run out and then there's a runoff and then there's a point where the road is fully super elevated. Uh -huh. So if you go back, yeah, so there's a, a, um, a run out and then there's a runoff and then there's a full super elevation. And as you can see, you have the symbols here, or the acronyms, I mean. So you have the end of the normal shoulder happening here, and then at the runout uh, distance, you have the end of the normal crown, because um, the, the road cross-section starts uh, super elevating, and then it goes all, all the way where it becomes a level crown. So you can see there's a level crown, and this coincides uh, with what we are seeing here. So these uh, acronyms, this is beginning of normal crown, and then you have the level crown, and then you have the reverse crown. And basically, that's how you do your square elevation, and it's pretty simple. You can see every point you have a curve, you have your square elevation happening. You can see here we have a curve. Um, it depends on the design speed and the size of the curve. So there are certain curves which are too big, such that you will not need square elevation. But most of the time, along every curve, when the vehicle is trying to maneuver or to negotiate that corner or that bend, you will need uh, that banking of the road whereby, um, whereby the road cross section super elevates. And that's it. And there's a data band here for the super elevation. So it show shows you the data about uh, the super elevation um, where you see the the two departures, the line here and the line here, this is at the point where there is a super elevation whereby the road is fully banked. And you see this, uh, it means these are the two departures from the from the crown. The middle of this line just indicates the crown level. And as you can see, when you're starting, usually the when you're starting before a curve, usually both of the lines are, are at the same level. All right? And that's how you do a super elevation calculation. And... It's pretty simple, as you have seen. So remember to like and to share the content and to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.